Hello and welcome to Mobility Now, a show presented by the Houston Galveston Area Council. I'm your host, Alan Clark, HJC's Director of Transportation. Today, we bring you a special edition of Mobility Now. We're celebrating 40 years of transportation planning in our region with a series of events commemorating major transportation milestones. Let's get started with a short video called The Art of Transportation. I would take you back to 1966. There was no Loop 610. There was no Katy Freeway. Think about that. As I look back 40 something years since I got here, the people 40 years from now are gonna be looking back at what we do. The Houston Galveston Area Council is celebrating 40 years as the Metropolitan Planning Organization for Transportation. Since 1974, HGAC has coordinated multimodal transportation efforts in a region encompassing eight counties. To better engage the public in preparing for the future, the Houston Galveston Area Council has developed an initiative highlighting milestones in regional transportation called the Art of Transportation. The Art of Transportation is a photo gallery depicting achievements of the past 40 years, including road, bridge, rail, airport, port, bicycle, and pedestrian facilities. The photo collection also features programs designed to reduce air pollution and meet environmental standards. A digital version of the exhibit can be seen on the web the Art of Transportation celebrates the collaboration of local governments, stakeholders, and the private sector who have worked hand in hand to make this region the home for over six million residents and the nation's largest international gateway for trade. In the region's transportation system, the show displays in the 70s, completion of the 610 loop, opening of US 290, and the creation of the Metropolitan Transit Authority of Harris County, or METRA. In the 80s, images remind the viewer about the creation of the Harris County Toll Road Authority, opening of the HOV lanes on I-10 and I-45, and completion of SH-288 down to southern Brazoria County. The 80s marked the beginning of construction of the majestic Fred Hartman Bridge. The decade of the 90s brought major initiatives in clean air and the creation of Transtar, a partnership that supports traffic operations and emergency management. Also in the 90s, voters approved construction of the Port of Houston's Bayport Container Terminal, an expansion of the ship channel. More recently, the 21st century brought improvements in freeways and toll roads the Galveston Causeway was completed, Metro launched Metro Rail, and Houston airports opened new terminals. By the year 2040, population and employment are expected to increase more than 50%. Goods movement by air and by sea will grow even more dramatically. Each year, our region invests approximately $2 billion in projects that impact the lives of six million residents and millions of visitors. The Houston Galveston Area Council supports cooperative action by local governments and promotes public participation in regional planning. The art of transportation is a multimedia tool to learn more, get involved in transportation planning, and build a better future for generations to come. With locally funded transportation agencies like Metro and the Harris County Toll Road Authority are major providers of transportation infrastructure. Today, we're at Harris County Commissioner's Court, a place where many decisions on roads and the highways that we drive on every day are made. My guest is Harris County Judge Ed Emmett, who is also chair of the HGAC Transportation Policy Council. Welcome back to Mobility Now, Judge. It's good to be here. Judge, you know about 100,000 or so residents on an average year move to our region. Many of those residents are coming to Harris County. You spend, I imagine, 23 of 24 hours 
figuring out how you're going to provide the services that these new residents need. Facing challenges of growth are not new to this part of Texas and certainly not new to Harris County. I'd like to spend just a few minutes talking about some of the major transportation milestones over the past 40 years that we take for granted every day. Well, uh, coincidentally, I, I moved here in 1966 uh, to go to Bel Air High School my senior year. And I remind people, there was no Loop 610, mm -hmm. there was no Katy Freeway, uh, the Astrodome had just been built. Uh, and so you look at the changes that have occurred in our region and it's really phenomenal. And of course there was no Harris County Toll Road Authority back then. And so when people today complain about transportation, I say, okay, where would we be without Loop 610, without I-10, without Beltway 8? And they all go, oh yeah, I guess that's right. So uh, transportation improvements have been remarkable, but there's nothing uh, to make us think that we won't need to keep making those level of improvements in the coming years. And of course, uh, the highways of our region are just one of the major elements of transportation. Correct. I mean, Metro didn't exist uh, uh, when I moved here, for example. The port has improved tremendously. The container terminals have been built since then. Uh, the rail lines, uh, you know, as recently as 1980, there were 40 class one railroads in the U.S. and today there are five and those railroads have all consolidated and we see that. And one of my favorite examples of transportation, uh, the rail line that runs between Bel Air and West University through Memorial Park, I remind people that was put there back in the 30s to get it completely out of the city of Houston. Most of the time, I know when I'm a driver, I don't really think about who owns the highway who spent those dollars, but in our region, much of that comes from our local governments. Uh, a remarkable amount of it comes from our local government. The toll roads, even though people don't like paying tolls, uh, that is totally the creation of the Harris County Toll Road Authority, mm -hmm. uh, which is, of course, run by Harris County Commissioner's Court. And we're glad they're there because, again, where would we be without West Park, without Hardy, without Beltway 8, all those toll facilities that allow us to move. Harris County, plays an important role outside of the corporate limits of our cities. And as more and more residents move to our area, I understand that many, if not most of those, are actually choosing to locate in the unincorporated parts of Harris County. The, the vast majority of, of newcomers to the area are moving to unincorporated Harris County, which leaves us in a real bind because county government uh, was never set up in the Texas Constitution uh, to to take care of urban streets, but that's what the county commissioners are forced to do on a regular basis. And then we have the uh, anomalies, farm to market roads in Harris County, in this urban area, FM 1960. You'd be hard pressed to say that that's a farm to market road, but the better example is Westheimer in front of the Galleria is technically a farm to market road. And counties have had to play a major role in improving those along with the Texas Department of Transportation. But when we come back, more about the art of transportation and how you can take a virtual tour of the exhibit from the comfort of your home. Tens of thousands of commercial vehicles travel our roads each day, idling, crawling, accelerating making the air we all breathe a little less breathable. If you manage a professional fleet, the Clean Vehicles Program from the Houston-Galveston Area Council has funds available to upgrade you to cleaner technologies. From vehicle replacements and conversions to retrofits, funding options are available to help clean the air and update your fleets. Contact Clean Vehicles today, and we can all breathe a little easier. Welcome back to this special edition of Mobility Now. My guest, Harris County Judge Ed Emmett and I are discussing the art of transportation. And judges, we've been talking about major transportation investments that have been made in the past. I know that many of these investments, um, I won't say that one person was always key to each of these projects, 
because it's a team effort with many agencies and organizations participating, but I can think of many uh, community leaders that were instrumental in the transportation network we enjoy today. Oh, oh certainly, and if you're talking about just the last 40 years, uh, I can name several names, but if you want to go way back in history, uh, I always ask people, well, who was the person responsible for the ship channel? And people go, uh, I don't know. Well, the answer, for the most part, is a man named Tom Ball. By the way, there's a town named after Tom mm -hmm. Ball now, far removed from the ship channel. But here most recently, uh, the Harris County Toll Road Authority, County Judge John Lindsay gets a tremendous amount of uh, credit for that, along with the County Commissioner's Court that, that made that happen. Bob Lanier, in his role not only as mayor of Houston, but before that as chairman of the Texas Department of Transportation. Uh, Ned Holmes, who's been on the Texas Department of Transportation Commission, uh, have, have played major, major roles. And then there have been a lot of other players along the way that contributed. I mean, Michael Stevens, uh, who is deceased, but did just tremendous amount of work on financing of highways and transportation improvements and how those got built. And, it, and of course, all the people that contributed to the development of Metro. Yeah, many of those were uh, elected officials, but some were not. Oh, yeah, quite uh, a few And were they out. just gave of their personal time and effort. Uh, I can think about the creation of Metro. That was a little bit before I got here, but I did have the opportunity to meet Mr. Howard Horn, who was uh, basically a private businessman uh, in the development community here, and I think he was the first chair of Metro. I believe that's but correct. But argued strongly for its creation with the voters. And, and then there were various legislators that pitched in. Uh, you know, one legislator who you know, tragically died in a car accident, unfortunately. Hawkins Menifee uh, was a big promoter of, of metro and, and transit back in the day. It takes, um, I think, a commitment, not just at the local level, but as you mentioned, in the state legislature as well. Well, and, and of course, the public wouldn't be surprised to know that these decisions are never unanimous. Uh, anytime you make a decision to, to put a new road or highway or a rail line even, in a particular area, the people in that area don't necessarily want it, but for the overall good. You know, I keep going back to Loop 610. It went right through the middle of Bel Air, Texas. I'm sure the people whose homes were uh, taken for the building of Loop 610 weren't happy about that. But again, where would we be without Loop 610? And you know, if you're talking about people, you know, the chairman of the House Transportation Committee when I went to the legislature in the late 70s and early 80s, was Don Henderson, mm -hmm. who was the state rep from up in the 1960 area. Think about how much that area has grown and all the things that he contributed up there. And sometimes um, just the idea itself is the hardest thing to deal with. Going back to Judge John Lindsay, um, I, if I remember correctly, toll roads had been tried in Harris County, but not successfully. In fact, the state had built a toll road and it had failed. And so then for the county to get in it, people were skeptical. And to this day, there's confusion because there are still people who think that, well, once the toll roads are paid for, they're supposed to be, quote, free roads. Well, of course, there's no such thing as a free mm -hmm. road. There never has been. But in this case, the Harris County Commissioner's Court under John Lindsay's leadership created a system so that as one road filled up and created revenue, you could use that revenue then to build the next segment. And that's why we have Beltway 8 completed all, over, all the way around the county now. I think that's uncommon. The, to my recollection, it's most very toll uncommon. roads have been built as single standalone projects. The system we have here uh, not only allows us to complete other toll roads, but it generates revenue then that can be used to the, for the roads that feed the toll road system, which are the other major arteries in, in the unincorporated part of the county. And when you think about the, the leadership that's been exhibited, to me it's not surprising that that leadership has really been from right here because um, most of the transportation funding comes locally. Well, it, it does, but even the part that comes from the state, as you well know, um, comes through the Transportation Policy Council where the local officials sit and decide what's good for the region. And I think it's important to talk about that because uh, Harris County doesn't operate in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. What we do impacts Montgomery County, Waller County, Fort Bend, Brazoria, Galveston, 
and, and all the cities that are involved. And, and it's important that we be able to get sit together as this Transportation Policy Council and make decisions that are for the good of the region as opposed to have everybody fighting among themselves over <laughs> the small amount of money that we do get. It would be very hard to get large transportation projects done without getting many, many people to agree to support that. And going back to your mentioning uh, Ned Holmes, who was on the Texas Transportation Commission, I can remember uh, his efforts to secure some additional funding for the US 290 project led to really uh, almost unanimous support around the policy council table for putting that project as a high priority and accelerating it maybe by a decade or more. Absolutely. That was one of uh, Mr. Holmes' last acts uh, as a transportation commissioner for the state of Texas. And part of that was Harris County agreed to put up $400 million Absolutely. to help build the managed lanes in the middle. So it won't be quite as wide as the Katy Freeway is now, but it'll be a similar kind of project. And then ultimately, I hope we can use the Gulf Coast Rail District to get commuter rail. I'm asked all the time, why don't we have commuter rail? Well, we just hadn't been able to find the funding mechanism, uh, and maybe the Gulf Coast Rail District through revenue bonds or other sources can make that happen. But these decisions are rarely made quickly, and projects can take many, many years to implement. Uh, don't you think that's one of the reasons why the leadership we see is so important because it's so hard to sustain these activities? Well, it's important that we have organizations and bodies like the Transportation Policy Council, to get back to that, so that when I leave as county judge, you know, I took over from Robert Eccles, and so many of these projects were already in the pipeline, mm -hmm. and then I take over, and then when I leave, somebody else will take over. Because you have a you know, 25, 30, 40 year planning scenario. And that's what we have to follow. And that means whoever is in office needs to be able to look at the foundation that's been laid. Well, and we have a lot of big transportation decisions to make in our future as well. To me, I'm impressed though, when I think about the last 40 years at the things that were accomplished, uh, in part because many of them were, this is the first time we've done it. And, and those must have been some of the most challenging decisions to make. Well, you know, uh, transportation is an ever-evolving art. I'll use mm -hmm. the term art since that's what this story is about. Uh, we can't just build highways. Everybody knows that. We have to use transit. When the port was built, it literally was the port of Houston. The ships came all the way up into downtown Houston. Clearly that doesn't work anymore. Now we're more of a region. And I think all of our transportation projects will take on more of a regional tone. Uh, interstate 69, mm -hmm. uh, the conversion of US 59 to an interstate highway, that I-69 bypass has got to go around to the east to help relieve the congestion at Freeport, Galveston, and the Port of Houston. Where's that going to go? We need to start that planning now. But it's fun, frankly. It's almost like a puzzle. You're trying to figure out the best way to solve a problem that you know is going to exist years from now. And, and we haven't talked a lot about the private sector, but they've been very important to transportation decisions in our region. I'm thinking about the railroad industry. They have to make major investments frequently, but we don't um, talk about them a lot unless we happen to be stuck when a train is trying to get uh, through. You know, the, the freight rail industry is critical to the economy, particularly to Houston, Harris County, and this entire region. All the chemicals that move out of here move out by rail. Uh, all the things that come to and from the port, a lot of those move by rail, some move by truck. Uh, but talking about private uh, sector influence, the Grand Parkway. That was originally conceived as a way of developers donating right away so that the highway could be built faster. It didn't quite work out the way that it was planned, but it was a private initiative in the first place. Thank you, Judge, for being with us today. It's my pleasure. When we come back, more about the art of transportation and the transportation decisions we will need to make to keep our economy resilient and competitive in the years to come. I'm Sheriff Adrian Garcia. Traffic accidents are the leading cause of death among teenagers. But you can do something about it. Distracted and careless driving claims many innocent lives. It can land you in jail or it can cost you your life. Driving is a privilege, 
If you get behind the wheel, make sure to buckle up, keep your eyes on the road, and not on your phone. And if you drink, don't drive. My daughter is my most valuable treasure. And for her safety and all of ours, pay attention while driving and respect, respect the roads. Tens of thousands of commercial vehicles travel our roads each day, idling, crawling, accelerating, making the air we all breathe a little less breathable. If you manage a professional fleet, the Clean Vehicles Program from the Houston-Galveston Area Council has funds available to upgrade you to cleaner technologies. From vehicle replacements and conversions to retrofits, funding options are available to help clean the air and update your fleets. Contact Clean Vehicles today, and we can all breathe a little easier. Welcome back to Mobility Now. My guest is now Brazoria County Precinct 2 Commissioner Matt Sebesta. Commissioner Sebesta is the second vice chair of HJC's Transportation Policy Council. Commissioner, welcome to Mobility Now. Thank you for having me, Alan. Commissioner, we've been talking about uh, some of the challenges our region faces as we add over 100,000 people on an average year to our region. I know that many of those are living in Brazori County and the other counties adjacent to Harris County where they often find attractive places to live and attractive places to work. I want to talk for a few minutes about some of the transportation challenges that you're facing today and you believe will be important to the future success of our region. Sure, Alan, I'm glad to. Uh, as we see uh, great things happening all around the Houston region, of course the energy industry has been a game changer mm -hmm. uh, with fracking and all of the opportunities. In Brazoria County, right now, we have existing and announced projects of over $20 billion. So we're seeing an influx of people. We're seeing a great economy in Houston. And one of the things that we see is down 288. A lot of folks are choosing to live down mm -hmm. that corridor. It's a fairly short drive into Houston. Uh, we're now seeing, as far as from 10 years ago, we're seeing over 20, 25,000 more cars a day than we saw back then. And now with the economy picking up, all of the great things happening, we've got subdivisions that are being announced. Down 288, we're bringing more and more people into the region. Well, Commissioner, I know that you've been working hard to be a partner with the Texas Department of Transportation on improvements in 288. In fact, I think this is the county's first major toll road corridor. Can you talk a little bit about the challenges that Brazori County has uh, been facing and the um, role that you as a county will be playing in the development of that facility? In 2003, we formed the Brazori County Toll Road Authority. We knew at some point in time with, especially with TxDOT's challenges within their budget, mm -hmm. it's difficult for them to go in and do the project. The legislature has worked with the different counties on specific projects and given counties the opportunities to do some projects, 288 being one of those projects. Probably the biggest challenge has been 288 lies within two counties, Harris County and Brazori County. Uh, Harris County has, has waived primacy. TxDOT will develop that using a CDA and the southern half of 288 will be developed by Brazoria County. We've retained primacy. We're working, getting engineers on board to start the design. And so it has been, I think when the legislature created this opportunity, really didn't think about two counties having the roadway with uh, within their two separate boundaries. So it's been a little bit of a challenge. Uh, we're working with TxDOT, trying to make sure that we can get 288 done from north of Highway 6 down to the Med Center area as far as initial stage of the project and also make sure we have the connectivity to uh, Beltway 8. That's going to be a, an extremely important component of this project is to make sure that the traveling public can get where they need to get and get there in a quick, efficient manner. Uh, Brazoria County is also a critical part of our uh, Gulf Coast economy because it hosts the port of Freeport. 
And uh, as we were talking with Judge Emmett earlier about the expansion of uh, the Port of Houston, I understand that the Port of Freeport's activities are growing rapidly as well. They are. They are uh, actively going international, looking for different partners. With our economy being what it is, we're going to see more exports uh, that are going to be going out of our ports. The, the great thing about Port Freeport, you know, one thing, it'll never be the size of, of the Port of Houston, but one of the great things that Port Freeport has is within three miles from the berth, you're in deep water. Mm -hmm. So there's some great opportunities there and we're seeing some opportunities where we're seeing that Port Freeport and Port Houston are starting to work together on some, some opportunities, which is a good thing. We're seeing a lot of additional truck traffic and that's why we've looked at being a part of the 36A coalition. Uh, 36 starts down at the Port Freeport and, and runs up into West Central Texas. And so we've seen, uh, I think with the resolution we passed last week, on uh, 36A to uh, encourage the study of that corridor, that's going to be of assistance both for economic activity, but also in the uh, event of the next time we have to have a hurricane evacuation. Uh, having all of the truck traffic and everything coming into Houston, if you think about it, just doesn't make sense. A lot of these trucks that need to go west or up into central Texas, mm -hmm. They, the truck drivers really don't want to go through Houston, and it's a benefit to all. Uh, it's a benefit to, the, to Port Houston, Port Galveston, that if some of that truck traffic is off that's coming from Port Freeport, it opens up the, the roadways a little bit. And, so. and that 36 corridor would be a natural for traffic that needed to evacuate, as you were saying, in the event of a threat from a major storm like a hurricane. Absolutely, and we will have other opportunities to evacuate. It's not, uh, it's not if, it's when. Thank you so much, Commissioner Sebesta, for your uh, insight into the needs for transportation investment in Brazoria County. And that's all the time we have for today's show, but I would like to thank again our two guests, Harris County Judge Ed Emmett and Brazoria County Commissioner Matt Sebesta for participating in this special edition of Mobility Now. My name is Alan Clark, the Director of Transportation Planning for the Houston Galveston Area Council. Thank you for watching Mobility Now.